okay. Before we start, let me show you first my MS Office version, which is Home and Student 2019. This is basically the lowest end of Microsoft Office packages, and this means that everything that I'll be showing you here will definitely be available to your PowerPoint as well, unless your MS Office is really old or already from about a decade back or something. Alright. Let's start. Usually when we draw something like a circle shape in our slide, we want it to be symmetrical. But drawing a symmetrical shape is not that easy. Like this one, it is oblong, not a circle. But when we repeat this, and before I draw the shape I press and hold the shift key in my keyboard. See that? It is symmetrical. It doesn't matter where I move my mouse, it will always be symmetrical, just as long as I hold down the shift key while drawing the shape. This applies to any of the shapes here, including the line. Drawing a straight line in PowerPoint is also a big challenge. But when you press and hold the shift key while drawing the line, there you go. The line will always be straight no matter where you move the mouse to. And you can still rotate the line if you want to, but only on 45 degree angle increments. For symmetrical shapes and straight lines, just always remember to hold down the shift key on your keyboard while drawing them. Next is a tip for a really easy alignment and placements of objects in your slide. For example in the shapes here, they are not aligned to each other at all. What you can do is select all of them. Then go to the Shape Format ribbon tab. Then expand the Align ribbon. And you'll have a lot of options here to align all the objects you've selected. You can align them to the left, right, top, bottom, middle or center, and you can also distribute them evenly, either horizontally or vertically. You can also see the small icons in the left of each menu items as a guide on what each menu item will do. Let's try to align them to middle. There you go. With just a single click, everything is aligned in the middle perfectly. You can play around with all of these options if you want, but I think the small icons here in the menu already tells what it does perfectly, like distributing vertically. Let's align these three to center. We can then distribute these other three horizontally. You can try this on your own. Now let me show you the power of the selection pane. Usually, when we want to arrange the stack of objects in our slide, we right-click one object, then we either bring it to front or send it to the back. But there is a much easier way of doing that. Just go to the Home ribbon tab. Then under the Editing group, expand the Select ribbon. From here, we can open the Selection pane. The Selection pane will appear in the right side of the screen, which will list all of the objects that are in the current slide. And as you can see, whichever object I select from the slide will be highlighted from the selection pane list. So this is a great way to know what is the object's name. From this list, you can freely select and move the objects as well. For example, you want the rectangle 1 and 3 to be in front, you can just select them from the list, then drag them going to the top of the list. And by doing that, you can see that rectangle 1 and 3 are now in the front. No need to right-click them individually. Let's say you changed your mind and you want oval 4 to be in front, just drag and drop it. There you go. And for example, for some reason, you don't want to delete oval 4, since you might still need it in the future, but you don't want it to appear in the slide. What you can do is click this eye icon beside it from the selection pane, and oval 4 will be hidden. Just click the eye icon again to show it. Selection pane is a great feature and an easier way of arranging the stack of objects within your slide. Let's now move to the eyedropper tool. For example I have a shape here which I want to have a fill that is exactly the same color as the circle shape. You can either get the RGB value of the circle, or a much easier way is to drop down the shape fill and use the eyedropper function here. On every color selection tool in Microsoft Office, the eyedropper tool will always be available. When you select that, the mouse cursor will turn into an eyedropper, and you can now point it to the color that you want to copy and just click. There you go. This new shape now has the exact same color as the circle. Let's say I want the shape outline to be the same color as the square shape. Just select the eyedropper tool, then click on the square. There it is. Really easy. Another use case that this eyedropper can be very useful is to use it to make a small picture like this peeking construction puppy like it was part of the whole slide. Let's do a format background, then in the slides fill color, let's select the eyedropper tool. Then let's pick the same color as this puppy picture's background. There we go. The small peeking puppy picture seamlessly looks like part of the whole slide now. I'm sure many of you can think of more creative ways of using the eyedropper tool. Share it in the comments below. Alright. Next is the merge shape. Probably most of us thinks that in PowerPoint, we are limited to all of the given shapes here. Well, that is not exactly true, since PowerPoint also gives us a feature where you can design your own shape. As an example, let's combine these three shapes into one. Just place them to whatever shape you want to create. Then go to the Shape Format ribbon tab, then click on the merge shapes. You'll have five options here. Let's select the first one, Union. And these three shapes is now just one shape. They have been fused to create this very unique shape. And do note that this is not a grouped shape. As you can see, the group is disabled since this is just really one shape now. 
Let me undo all of that for now so I can show you the other options for the merge shapes. Let's do a two-shape merging now to make it simpler. What we did earlier is the union which fuse all the selected shapes into one. Next option here is the combine, which will still fuse the shapes, but this time it will make all the intersecting area to be transparent. See this when I move the shape over other parts here, you see that the intersecting parts are as truly transparent now. Let's undo it again to go through the other options. We'll do the fragments now. In this option, all the intersecting edges from the shape selected will be the slice points. These two shapes will now be sliced to create multiple shapes. So we have this one shape now. Another one here, and another one. This is a great option if you want to slice out a new unique shape. The next one is intersect, which is basically the opposite of the combine, where the intersecting spaces will be the only thing that will remain in the shape. In combine, the intersecting spaces will be removed, while in intersect, those intersecting spaces will be the remaining part. And the last option is subtract, where the first shape will be removed against the second shape. But these options, your imagination will only be the limit to create new unique shapes that you need. Let me show you now the awesome free PowerPoint objects that you can insert in your slides. First is the 3D model. Just go to Insert Ribbon tab, then 3D Models. You can either select a 3D model from your local drive, or select those that are readily available in PowerPoint. Do note that you need an internet connection to do this, since these objects reside from the Microsoft server, and you still need to download them. We'll have 59 categories here to choose from. Let's try the monsters. Each category has 20 more 3D models to choose from. The dragon looks cool, let's select that. At first look, it looks just like any other 2D pictures, but if you hold and drag this atom symbol icon in the middle of the picture, you will be able to rotate the 3D model and view all angles. You can set the default angle view here if you want to. In the animations, aside from the usual ones, you will also have 5 more 3D animations here to choose from. Let's try the jump and turn animation here. Cool. Let's try the turntable. Then in the effect options you can set it to continuous. So the 3D model will just rotate in the slide forever, which can be a nice aesthetics when you are presenting. Okay. Before, when I want to use a screenshot in my slide, I usually use the snipping tool, or press the print screen key on my keyboard, and then paste the image to the slide. But PowerPoint makes that a lot easier. Just go to the Insert Ribbon tab, then Screenshot. This will present all the active window in your current Windows session. You can just click the window you want to insert in your slide, and it will automatically be added. Another option is to go to Screenshot, then Screen Clipper, which is the same as the clipping tool. But by using this, you don't need to open another external application anymore. It's just here within the PowerPoint itself. Now for the images, I usually just search from Google before to get my images, which has become harder now, since most of the images in the search results are licensed now. The easier and safer way to get awesome images is to go to the Insert tab again, then Pictures, and Online Pictures. You have 52 categories here to choose from. Let's try the man category. Let's try to insert this old man here. As you can see it is a full HD resolution, just like any pictures that you can get here. With that many categories, there's no need for Google anymore. Let me copy this picture since I will use this in the next item. Let's paste the picture here. OK. Usually when you do a crop, you always do it in a square-shaped guide. But cropping in PowerPoint is a lot more than that. When you drop down this crop ribbon, you have an option here to crop the image based on aspect ratio. Let's say making it a square. There you go. And you can then realign the part of the picture that you want to remain in the square shape. There are more aspect ratio options here for both portrait and landscape, just click the one you like. Aside from the preset ratio, you can also crop any picture on any shape available here. Maybe you are doing a slide where someone is dreaming about an old man, you can crop it to this shape. Or maybe someone wants to show how much he loves his father, you can crop this into the shape of a heart. Really easy. Or maybe something artistic like portraying an old man peeking from a lighting-shaped wall. There you go. Now for the final tip. I will need to run the slideshow for this. Let's run from the current slide. While running the slideshow, you can press the F1 key from your keyboard, and this help dialog box will appear. From here you will see all the hotkeys that you can use while you are presenting. Like W for white screen, or S for stopping automatic show, and more. There are also hotkeys for rehearsals, for media controls, for ink and laser pointer controls, and touch screen controls. You can memorize some of these hotkeys, especially those that you use often, and just use them while presenting. For me, I memorized a control P for pen, so I can annotate, and control I for highlighter as well. And E for erase. Those are my most used functions when presenting so I memorize their hotkeys. Alright. That's it for this one, I hope that you learned something new from this video. Do note that this is not the last topic for PowerPoint tips and tricks. This is actually just a start. 
I will be creating more videos like this, and each video will be a more advanced PowerPoint tips and tricks topic. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you won't miss them. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobat Air.